Awesome Saucers, welcome again to another day with Kai Farm. So today we just want to give you that once in a while walkthrough of the apiary. Kind of like to give you some updates of some of the things that has been happening, yes? Have a little bit of change at the front here. Uh, we kind of moved over um, slowly but surely that hive to that stand there. The objective is actually to turn it and let it face the opposite direction. And it's just really to kind of let not let the all of the bees kind of aim their entrance down towards the house. So the objective is kind of have them either pointing um, that way or um, basically back to the trees. Um, just pretty much to kind of take any potential um, aggressive behavior from them off the household. In that hive right now is one of the new queens that I had grafted. She should have started to lay. Um, I think she hatched out there about last weekend. And I did spot her um, as a virgin queen running around. So um, we're probably going to check back there about sometime in the week. And see what's happening um, if she has started to actually lay and stuff. The last time when we checked on her, we spot her and we saw where the bees were actually starting to polish um, the frames for her to actually start to lay into. So it's just a matter of time, I believe. So and we have the two little five frames set up over there. Both swarm queens that moved in the apiary um, late December, January, there about. Uh, I think the one on the right was the queen that took over our first cell queen cell builder um, they've grown quite a lot um, what I had done was to double up on the boxes because if I didn't um, they would pretty much go into swarm mode and even when I double them up I still had to take away some strength from them in terms of brood um, because they were just building comb and, and all of that really fast in that five frame setup so what I had to do was basically in both of them uh, move up two other built out comb fill the space with empty actually empty frame I didn't give them any foundation sheet any foundation strip or anything just drop the foundation the actual frame inside and let's let them do work you know do their own thing what whatever comb they wanted to build that's what they, they, they allow, I allowed them to do I believe should have actually filled out the entire box by now so definitely need to check in to and get an update in terms of what's happening in there and how they're expanding themselves in the two layers and it's the same thing um this hive right here uh i had taken away five frame of bees from hive number one with the original queen because the hive number one i was going to make into my queen cell um, starter or my grafting colony so put her here and it's the same thing she built up quite fast um, i had to double up and pretty much put in empty frames in there so every one of the five frame boxes that i have in the apiary i had to do that pretty much with the exceptions of like this one and another one in the apiary that has a new virgin queen in there um those are the ones that really have one layer but uh, as the season progress um, we might need to actually add space so I came down here earlier to actually pull off some honey off of those four at the back. Um, but when we checked um, this one here, they haven't quite kept off the frames in the shallow. I think they when I checked, they only have seven up there and they haven't been kept off yet. Um, but we suspect what slowed it down is because we did the conversion a little bit too late into a double deep. Um, so right now, um, the queen is pretty much just in the top deep box. Um, I, it, based on my observation, I believe she kind of migrated the bottom. So what the bees are doing right now in the bottom section is just filling all of the frames down there as the current brood hatch out with pollen. So that's what's happening. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this hive. Potentially, I might need to just rotate it to kind of switch around the queen or I might just leave it for now and because um, if the queen is in the middle there's a queen excluder and then the shallow so I believe that even if they want to bring up extra honey they would put it in the shallow 
um, they wouldn't necessarily want to swarm but I don't know it, I just have to keep my eye on it because I don't like when the queen actually migrate from the bottom section and just go up to the top um, that's um, a recipe for swarming basically didn't go into number eight and the reason why I kind of aborted the extraction guys um, rain was falling uh, yesterday and I realized that well once I went into five I had a lot of bees coming like robbers starting um, to come to the area so I said you know what it's not actually a good idea to extract today because if I extracted I would have had so much trouble um, with the actual robbing that's gonna start up with all the shaking of the frames and all of that so kind of opted not to go any further with the extraction process so just kind of just popped in and look into the supers to see what the frames were like the top deep on that has a lot of honey in there none of them really seems like they're being kept off um, this one actually have five cap frames of shallow that I could take but as I said the robin situation I couldn't just I, I just wasn't ready to work with that to be honest with you and then this I know for sure that shallow it has 10 frames of honey in there the deep I'm not 100% sure how much is in the deep but all of them are pretty strong there and they have a lot of decent amount of honey um, in there that I could potentially harvest but as I said the robin the robin guys all right so let's give you a little update now on here this also this has eight frames in the top because it's a single queen excluder and then sorry it's actually a deep queen excluder and then a deep as a shallow so the lower section um, quite packed with bees I need to definitely um, shake out some of the bees out of there because that's kind of my swarm prevention uh, mechanism so to kind of shake away nurse bees into another weaker hive if I don't do that the next thing is to actually extract the honey from the top section and remove the queen excluder so that means I could change it into a double chamber setup and that should prevent them from having any form of swarm build up in, the, in that specific box this is hive 7 reduced hive 7 to a 5 frame setup turned it into a mating nuke so hive 7 we reduced it um, because hive 7 and hive 10 are two other hives that were that were really not building up in the apiary and um, every time I tried to strengthen them they would always fall back to um, a small amount of brood frames that they were than they were from building them up to so I kind of made the decision to do away with those queens and then convert those hives into actual mating nukes so I took away the most of the frames as you see it's a five frame so I'd have needed space to put the other five that came from it so I converted another nuke that I had in the apron into a 10 frame setup using that strength and then reduces to a mating nuke um, so from the set of queens that I grafted dropped a queen cell in there I can gladly say that that queen had hatched went out and mated started laying some absolutely wonderful frames of um, brood in there so that colony is pretty much set the end goal for it I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna let it remain as a five frame set up two layers um, but the overall goal in the April is to just run five colony like that has double layer five frame boxes and that's really just to as resource hives where I can take anything from them when it ranges from brood honey bees anything it really it, it ranges from and I can also split the double layer make two nukes or two five frame nukes out of it and put new queens in there if I want to so that's kind of the idea of it just have them um, in the season right now they really need the space they're not gonna be able to stay um, in a five frame setup um, for very long you know cuz when it's in season and food is in abundance in the environment they're gonna build up really fast in those small boxes so that I need to consider actually doubling up soon um, as you can see there's a lot of activity at the front because it did get a, a decent push in terms of population um, I left back five frames of brood in there along with 
um, the queen cell. So that set off that five frame of brood have hatched out and give that colony a really good boost to maintain and kickstart that new queen when she came about. So yeah. And then now we have the two here on this stand. Um, hive one, we're gonna actually convert it into a shallow setup. There's a queen in there, a virgin queen I know running around in there. In the top section is just um, the frames, of, like the food frames that they were packing in pollen, nectar and honey in. Um, one frame they had started to polish um, for the queen to actually start laying into it because she hasn't started laying yet. So what I did was from those other shallow hives that I have at the front there, those two, I took some frame of brood and honey from them and put it into the lower section here. So all the bees will gravitate to all the brood that's down to below. Um, granted they'll still venture up top to eat food and whatever but the key thing is having the brood down in there with the virgin queen and that will probably encourage her to go out and mate even faster than normal. So. That hive will kick start and we'll keep it going in a shallow. We'll eventually remove that deep from, from it and utilize it potentially. As I said, I want I might bring this hive to a, a double deep, I'm not sure, but we want to free up back some of these deep boxes for um, other hives that we want to change into a double deep before the season ends. And then we have our good friend here, number two. Um, has been treating us quite well this season in terms of honey production. Um, so far we have probably gotten a total of, let me see, from January to now, this hive has given me five frames, of, deep frames of honey and nine frames full of shallow. That's how much this hive has given me since January. Um, and if you recall, it was a five frame hive at the earlier stages of January and we did the conversion into a 10 frame box um, definitely um, one of the best decisions I've made in the April um, I think we, we converted it right like a week before the, the, the flow started for me with, in, with, with regards to like the Lago tree start blooming so that's what really um, allowed me to capitalize on getting so much honey from them and they, they were a really good hive in terms of the queen was laying nicely um, they always grow extremely fast, you know, um, and that's something I've observed with them when they were in um, the five frame setup pretty much. So kudos to them, you know. We have our little aggressive bunches here, hive four and three. Um, from hive four, we, we definitely took away nine frames of shallow honey from them, shallow frames from them with honey. Um, we did leave back about four um, that were uncapped, um, so we kind of rearranged it, we put the uncapped honey um, in the first shallow and then put back the wet super on top. So we definitely want to go in and reorganize this box a bit because we, we want to kind of drop in a queen excluder ab above um, or below one of the shallows. So this is going to be just for honey and then we put a queen excluder here and leave them with this space. Um, this deep we leave them with this space in terms of the deep and the shallow for the queen that's what we want to do because that's what we kind of observed she has been doing she actually ventured into this box and started to lay eggs so it's all right it seems as if this queen will do well with a deep and a shallow uh, as her layer so that's what we're pretty much gonna work with um, based on what she showed me um, but ideally I think we probably could change it into a double deep but you know, one of the key things I've been experimenting in, in this April is the level of um, disturbance to certain hives. This hive, I have not disturbed the brood makeup of this hive um, since the season has started. Meaning, I didn't take away any frame of brood, I didn't shake away any nurse bees. I didn't try at all to stop this hive from swarming. All I did when before the season start was to remove the queen excluder and drop on these two shallows and they've just done the rest. They've brought up honey into the shallows. Um, the queen has ventured up and created a little arch for herself to lay and she has just worked excellently. 
And I'm wondering if I, if some of these hives, do I really need to even mess with them? All I just I, I think I need to do is just potentially just give them <laughs> space. And I think that's what this hive is showing me that I don't need to do too much. The most I did with this hive was to basically extract um, frames that were like halfway honey and halfway brood. That's what I did with this hive and it worked out fine, you know. Once I did that, the queen pretty much to recover, recovered that space as laying space. And it seemed as if they just started just using the shallows exclusively as honey sections. Granted, you know, there are honey arches on most of the deep frames. But like the central section, the central frames, there's no honey arch because the queen kind of created this form of um, brood layer in this section here like an arch up here so this is like how the brood is spanning in the hive basically so all the end frames like a, a three end frames right here I have a little honey arch two or three of them here have a little honey arch basically that's how I observed it um, and as I said I didn't mess with it other than to just extract the frames that really had um, a high capacity of honey stores in there that's all I did this hive uh, it's a iffy hive it's it's not a high producer um, how I managed to get honey from this hive is that whenever they store honey in the lower section like at the ends because what I observe they do is they always store honey in the end frames right that's it so what I did was to move up those frames into the sh into the actual super add empty frame and um, foundation sheets and that kind of encourage them now to actually start bringing up honey a little bit more and I think I have what seven frames in there and I managed to take away four frames in our last extraction so there about this hive has given me approximately eight frames or probably ten I'll probably say ten frames of deep of honey so far from January so they're doing all right um, as I said, one of the things I'll need to do to prevent swarming with it, because it's a single chamber for the queen right now, I would need to remove the queen excluder and kind of drop in some um, frames or foundation in the top section. And then hopefully um, the queen will gather that area as laying space. Yeah? And we might need to move up a frame, a brood or so, from the bottom section just to get them in the groove of having that space for themselves. And then here we have Hive 10, as I told you, Hive 10 and 7 were two of the poor performers in the April. Um, and surprisingly enough, um, Hive 10 was a daughter of Hive 7. Um, so they kind of just showed the same sign in terms of behavior, um, in terms of development. They were just not productive hives to my liking. So basically converted it into a shallow and dropped in a new queen in there in terms of a queen cell that queen I can say safely went out mated and has started to lay in there I think they're currently on six frames of shallow in there now so she has been growing all right I need to increase the population a little bit so one of the drives I might go through the apron and do is to shake off some nurse bees from other hives into this so just to give it a little bit boost uh, to get it going you know and then this hive I don't know if you can see the queen excluder so this is what I want this is kind of what I want to do with hive 4 this hive is kind of showing me the same sign that hive 4 showed me didn't do any extreme manipulation in the lower section other than to remove deep frames that have extremely amount of honey stores in there like if it's 50 50 brood and honey took away those frames extracted it and pretty much let the queen recapture those spots as brood area and it worked out excellent because the the box in the lower section the queen is pretty much laying on all 10 frames and she came up and do a little arch laying into the shallow here similar to hive 4 so it's working perfectly um took away 10 frames of actual shallow honey kept off from them so what I did was to just drop on the queen excluder back on this hive 
above the first shallow because I observed that that's where they're laying. They're kind of laying in there. So didn't want to reduce back her space and give, let it remain as that space for her. The deep and the shallow. And then just put the queen extruder on and drop back the wet frames above. So the hope is that they'll build up the rest of the frame and potentially lay in it here. And the excess honey they'll continue to put back up where the wet supers were. Um, any more honey that's coming in um, for the rest of the season basically. As I said, the, these two over here, hive 4 and hive 12, got minimal um, brood manipulation, you know, and they did give me decent amount of honey. And that's one of the things I've, I've been experimenting with in the apiary, especially when you think about these hive in the back here. Timing is very key and essential in, in being productive in beekeeping um, this hive I converted it I think a week or two before the actual um, second phase of the nectar flow started for me into a double chamber and it has worked perfectly for me in terms of the queen is spanning the two boxes um, they have continued to bring up honey up here and honey up here so they're highly productive and then what I realized is these two, which is hive six and hive five that I did late, I did I converted these into deeps like probably one week or one and a half week into the flow. So that kind of messed up their production. Um, granted, it potentially saved me from them swarming because this hive definitely needed more, more space. Um, so it might have helped me to prevent swarming and maintain the colony um, productivity or productiveness but in terms of how it affect their honey production or what I could get from them in terms of surplus they would have started to work in filling this deep with honey before they actually move the excess or the surplus to the super so doing it late in the season or when late when the nectar season or nectar flow starts has definitely affected these so Really, I, I have not gotten, since I have done the two extraction from January and February, I have not been able to take anything from them yet. Um, and as I said, there's five frames here, but that one over there don't have much that I can take. They're uncapped. Um, they're open frames of nectar in there. So, I don't know. I'll just leave them for now and just let them go through till probably the end of the season. Then I see what is in there that I could take as potential surplus but for it just shows you that in beekeeping there's some highs that you really don't re, you really don't need to do much in terms of brood manipulation and it will work out fine for you um, while some you might need to do some form of adjustment so single chamber with the queen excluder might work against you um as the season build up um pretty much and that's what i've observed with these box so all the strength from hive 7 came to this hive here and this is hive 13 so it was pretty much a five frame setup if you recall and um, there were two five frame boxes here so took all of the strength from hive 7 packed it here and converted it to a 10 frame deep um, put a queen excluder on and put the honey frames in the top section um, I haven't been in there in a while but I need to check them but because of the robbing issue that I realized I was going to build up I didn't actually go into this side but I need to go into it to see what's happening in there I did have the pollen trap on this side where I was harvesting a little pollen but because I know I had honey in the super I kind of removed the pollen trap um so that they could potentially um increase the airflow in the hive so that those frames in the top section can be kept off um, quicker you know i don't want to hinder it but as soon as i um extract the honey from there i'll remove the queen excluder and put on back the pollen trap on it this hive five frame as i said the five frames i can't let them stay as five frame boxes had to put on a next layer on top of it and 
similar to what I did with the rest um, in terms of moving some frames up to the top and filling the empty space with frame empty frames um, they've worked excellently in terms of building out those empty spaces and putting brood and all of that storing honey in there so need to definitely pop into them and see what's happening because I believe I did that two weeks ago so a lot can change in two weeks guys so <laughs> definitely need to pass through them and see what's happening but yeah so I did do a run through of this hive hive 12 um, hive 3, hive 4 and hive 2 and I did extract some honey from them so out of all these four hives and all of that yielded me a bucket of honey um, basically a little bit over a bucket, about a bucket and a quarter right now I have um, a couple more hives to go through and extract honey from which is this um, I'm gonna take whatever they, this can give me I know these two big ones, 8 and nine have only in there that I can take and I know this one which is hive 11 and 13 down there um, has only in there both have only in there that I can take so you know I kind of learned from the, the mistake I did with these two when I did it late and I look at it and I say you know what I'm not gonna trouble this I'm just gonna leave it and let the queen um, don't tamper with the brood section at all and luckily I'd, I followed my mind and didn't mess with it and it, it, it pretty much all the frames in that deep are filled in with honey um, well they're open none of them is capped yet um, so the shallow is really what I'll be taking from and then rotate it um, so I'll put the wet shallow and then move down the deep so I can start curing whatever is in the, um, the deep and it's the same thing for this so this is all the frames up here packed in with honey i think there are actually nine frames or ten frames up here to be honest um and then here is nine frames so when i extract here i'll rotate it and drop this down a little bit more put the wet super above it and then let them start working on um, capping off these frames so that's kind of what i'm gonna do with those hives so this tree here is the black bead or cat claw black bead um, and the bees forage from it I don't know if you saw that one just now um, there was a bee on here but it, it's a tree that flowers weird as you see there's actually seeds or pods that have bloomed from January early January those are no pods we had these set that bloomed February they're gonna dry up soon and then these most of these came on in late March and then we see where we still have some that will be blooming in April so it's something that blooms constantly you know it's just constantly blooming and we kind of love it because we realize the, the bees get honey from it um, quite well so this tree here I don't quite know what the name of it is I've, I've not been able to find it in terms of what its name is but this is the end product so it was blooming there about I think late February mid February to late February so these are actually the the seeds they're green right now so they'll dry off and all of that so that's the flower I was trying to show you earlier yeah so this is one of the trees kind of runs like a, a, a viney kind of tree that's how it kind of runs I don't know what it is so that that's one of the key things as I said guys timing timing is key if you can't get the things done on time um, pretty much you lose all if all the effort of the bees in terms of bringing in surplus so you got you got you have to analyze and know when's the right time to do things and ideally you want to do you want to get stuff ready at least two weeks in advance of any form of nectar flow coming in you know um, so you can capitalize on it so that's pretty much a little uh, tour for you guys so as usual we just want to say thanks for tuning in your time was greatly appreciated just want to implore you to give the video a like share with your friends mm -hmm. and definitely hit that subscription and notification bell so you can see when new videos come out and
Peace out.